doing today? Was the food good? Excellent. Well, today it feels like the last day of school today. It's very exciting. My name is Dave Abrams. I work for County Executive Shu, who's joined us here today. And uh, we started this process about two years ago now uh, with 50, probably upwards of 80 ideas and whittle it down to 50. We saw half of the projects uh, back in December and this is the second half. And I cannot tell you how impressed I am with the work that the students did um, this semester. There, there's some great projects out there. Uh, we're gonna have a short program for you. Uh, I know everybody started talking about it already over lunch and uh, hopefully after we're done here, you can go out and we have you know plenty of time to walk around and ask questions of the students. Um, great job by everybody. So with that, I'm not gonna talk a lot. Uh, I wanna introduce our County Executive, Steve Shu. Good afternoon, everybody. This is so exciting. I had an opportunity to look at a couple of the projects already, and it's just unbelievable, the work that you do. It just uh, blows me away. I want to thank uh, Provost Dr. Mary Rankin for her leadership on this program, this great initiative, as well as Garrett Knapp and Erie Avon from the Partnership for Action, Learning, and Sustainability PALS. That's a mouthful. Very excited about this partnership between the University of Maryland and Anne Arundel County. The students and faculty have been working on this together now for two full semesters and they've got a lot to show for it. Two years ago we started this effort with a list of about 50 projects and uh, gave the students an opportunity to get involved covering every department in county government. Last semester the students delivered a vision for a new urban park in Odenton Town Center, which is a really high priority project for us, and a trail connection between Anne Arundel County and Howard County. So that's also really important. Right now, it's sort of like if you're in Vermont and you're trying to go to New Hampshire, you can't get there from here, you know? And that's how it is with Howard County and Anne Arundel. If you want to bicycle from one to the other, walk, hike, it's almost impossible. This semester, I'm really excited to see what the students have come up with for Tipton Airport and Arlington Echo. Those are two really important assets for Anne Arundel County, but they're, they're both, as the students now well know from having spent a lot of time at those assets, very underdeveloped, underutilized, have a lot of challenges, but they can be tremendously important assets for Anne Arundel County if, if we follow through on the vision that you've laid out for us. There's so much more from technology-driven tools to improve transit to computer programs that will help the fire department better manage EMS to documentaries about how we're fighting the heroin epidemic, this heroin thing is so out of control, and, and I appreciate any good idea that anybody can put on the table to help us. It's very important to tap this resource because of the new ideas and perspectives that we get from young professionals in engineering, architecture, information technology, urban planning, just to name a few disciplines. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Garrett and ask you to tell us about the projects that you'll see today. Thanks. So I'm not going to tell you about the projects, but I do want to, I do want to thank uh, everybody uh, for being here. We launched this program three, three, four years ago, and we had no idea whether this was going to work at all. So it is this crazy idea. We saw a few other universities doing something similar, and we started it, and it's, it's been probably one of the greatest programs I think we at the Smart Growth Center uh, have, uh, not only because it's it, the fabulous work that all you students do, uh, the great leadership by the faculty, but the engagement that we get with local governments is, is just just tremendous. Uh, we have great support from the university administration just because it's so great all the work that, that you really do. Um, we've been working with Dave and Emily now for a couple years. Uh, it's been great, but it's over. <laughs> no, it's not over. We, we hope that we continue. Uh, in some of the past uh, uh, interactions we've had with other local governments, many other programs and, and, and policies and, and programs uh, and classes have gone on. Um, and we've seen the implementation of many of the ideas that students have put forward. Oh, yeah. Anne Arundel County is full of challenges as well as opportunities. And sometimes we have to look to 
the leaders of the future to give us the best ideas on how to solve the problems. So I'm Dave Abrams and we're here at the Arundel Center in Annapolis to talk about the PALS program, which is the Partnership for Action in Learning and Sustainability. And this is the University of Maryland. I'm here with Uri Avon. Thank you for joining me. And um, tell us, what is PALS? So PALS is a unique opportunity for students in their courses to apply their knowledge from class to the real world and tackle real problems with real clients and get into helping people in one semester try and address their needs. So they start off with the problem and then they work with their faculty over 14 weeks to devise ideas, solutions, work with the county and present them and hopefully have an impact under the broad heading of sustainability. And tell me briefly about your background. You're, you're a planner, correct? I'm an architect planner and have been a consultant for 30 years, worked for local government in planning for a decade, and have been at the university for the last five years teaching and running the PALS program. And what counties PALS has worked with in the past and up to today? So last year we worked with Howard County. In fact, that was the basis for developing a joint county between, a project between Howard and, and Ronald County, looking at linking trails between the two. Uh, before that, we worked with um, the city of Frederick in Maryland. And this year, coming up, we're about to work with Prince George's County as well as Montgomery County with a range of issues, probably for two years. Wow. Well, you know, let's, let's, without further ado, let's go take a look at some of the work the students are doing. Thanks for your work with Anne Arundel County. Let's do it. Right. Thank you. Let's go. So first up, we have a really great project from the Robert Smith School of Business. We have some students here. Tell me your first names. Victoria. Victoria. Gabby. Gabby. I'm Colin. And uh, these are, did the three of you work yourselves or you had other students as well? Okay, great. So their project was to create a business model for Anne Arundel County Public Schools students to run, operate, soup to nuts, their own business. So tell us a little bit about what this business does. So this business markets an internship portal that connects um, local businesses in Anne Arundel County Public Schools to uh, the students in the high schools. And so they're working to market it to other um, county public schools around Southern Maryland. So, so what they do is they have this portal, right? And the businesses can access the portal and get a whole list of students who can be interns for them. And then once that's all put together, they can then sell that to other jurisdictions to do the same thing. Is that So the students apply for the positions, and then the businesses can choose from there. And then the students are working to market in order to sell the internship portal to the other community colleges. And the web developers have to be able to expand that. Mm -hmm. And does that answer your question? Yes, it does. So tell us what, so you gave the students sort of like a framework of how to do this. Uh, walk me through some of the, and we'll pan here so they can see it, but walk us through some of the materials you gave them to use. So um, we sort of gave them a framework. We were working through the process ourselves to develop um, the final framework that we'll use for in the future for other student-run businesses. But basically what we did was we looked at key partners and activities, um, people they needed to talk to, sort of what the value was of their business. Um, customer relations, we really focused on stakeholder discovery, so making sure that um, when they marketed their product, they knew um, who their stakeholders were so they could really market it in the best way possible. Um, the cost structure, it's um, a website, so re replicating that, that website. Um, and customer relations, things like that were really what we focused on when developing their, their business plan. Awesome. 
So um, tell us, so it's kind of like a how-to, step-by-step, plug-and-play kind of module you've set up, right? Okay. Yeah, um, so the big thing that we wanted to do was to make sure that not just internet, but uh, any high school business that Tammy works with in the future, Tammy would have that framework and a lot of resources um, to help them uh, with any business model that they wanted. So. Um, you know, right now this is more an internet-based business. Uh, it's, it's on the computer and uh, it's very lean and very fast, so uh, like a smaller team of students can do it. But it also applies to more brick and mortar. So um, any business that wants, um, it just needs to start, you know, uh, needs a theory of change, needs to, you know, start pricing or uh, figure out their value proposition. They use this canvas, uh, they use like all our model, and uh, I think they have a really good advantage uh, if they were to use this. And, um, you know, everything that we can do to help Tammy, because she's been doing a great job in the county, like helping out these businesses start, so. And this is Tammy with Anne Arundel County Public Schools? Absolutely, What's yeah, she's name? great. What is her last name? Diedrich. Diedrich. Tammy, Tammy Diedrich. Diedrich. Tammy, Diedrich. thank you, Tammy Diedrich. Well, you all did a fantastic job, and I know any day, month, or year now, we are going to see this out in the public sphere, and people paying big money for it, and getting our, our public school students a chance to be entrepreneurs. So. Great job and good luck to you guys in uh, getting great jobs in the private sector when you're done with school. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's take a look at some more projects. So everybody in Anne Arundel County loves Arlington Echo Outdoor Education Center. And a lot of us, our parents went there, you know, our kids, our cousins, our friends. And over the years, some of the buildings have aged quite a bit. So Anne Arundel County Public Schools asked the PAL students to come up with a vision and a master plan for how to move forward with renovations to it. So we'll take a look at some of the features of that. This drawing shows an aerial view of Arlington Echo, obviously lots of waterfront property, and it shows a new plan for parking and uh, walkways that connect that are good for learning about nature and of course renovations to all of the structures on the property. We have an amphitheater up here at the north end. All kinds of, uh, you have a dining hall of course, a renovated parking lot, a confidence course, a marsh walk, and a natural play area just to name a few of the new features. So here we are, now we're talking about Tipton Airport, which is our municipal airport over by Fort Meade. Uh, it's been there for quite a few years and the county executive asked the students from the University of Maryland to come up with a vision for the future of Tipton Airport. So tell me your name and what the name of your, um, your course is. Uh, my name is Katie Ferguson and my course is uh, Landscape Architecture 641. Okay, and um, tell us a little bit about the parameters of this this project and what you guys were tasked with doing. We were tasked with uh, finding new ways to increase the economic viability of Tipton Airport because the county executive really wanted it to be a service to the entire county. Mm -hmm. So, so what were some of the the main features that you focused on? We focused on adding some office and some retail space, uh, finding a iconic new terminal that uh, could help Tipton Airport expand, and um, bringing some services over from Fort Bead, such as the National Cryptologic Museum and some of the libraries, so that they can um, we can share that space with them. And I thought one of the more interesting things that didn't occur to me is if you're trying to sell commercial and office space at a municipal airport and you have this newly designed um, terminal and these new buildings, one of the cool things about it is the view, right? Yeah, we um, included a third floor rentable space in the terminal so that the, you can rent it out for events or for meetings and you have this great view right out over the runway and all the way down to the um, Patuxent Wildlife Refuge to the south. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing my work and watching the planes fly in, right? Yeah, that would be a great place to uh, do work. And. Um, what did you do in terms of, I mean, you guys, are you guys experts about airports now? Did you like look at all these airports? <laughs> we did a lot of studies about uh, similar general aviation airports in the area and the viability of Tipton Airport, especially if they can extend their runway, and we think that they could bring in more business. Well, you guys did a fantastic job, and we look forward to this vision becoming a reality. Thanks. Great job. Let's Thanks. go look at some other projects. So one of the 
more high level stuff that people like me don't even understand is the computer based technology tools that students have come up with and these are information technology students who worked on many many different projects for the county a lot of them were taking a a spreadsheet that barely worked or nobody knew how to use and turning it into a, an attractive looking easy to use tool so they can push a button and see the data in all kinds of different ways and, and actually use it more effectively. So let's meet some of the students behind this. What is your name? Apurva. Uh, uh -huh. Nice to meet you. Yeah. And Ashley Turnbull. Oh, we got more hiders. Hi, Anushka. Um, Anushka, I know Anushka. Hi, Xinyu. Xinyu, nice to meet you. Ronak. Eita. Prasad. Hitesh. Manuza. I'm Meghna. Great. Now, I'm going to pick on Anushka first. Come on over here, Anushka. So, Anushka, tell us what, what product you made for the cat. I made a mobile web application. An app? Web. You made an app? <laughs> mobile website. Yeah. I like apps. So, what, what does the app do? So it basically aggregates the information that the police uh, give out on their website, on their Twitter account, on their Facebook account, and personal emails, and aggregates it and puts it in the web app. Okay. So um, basically what it is is you can get any information about the, the police department and what they're doing and the information they're trying to put out in one place, right? Yeah, right. Making it easier for everybody. Yeah, mainly alerts. Alerts, alerts and notifications. Yeah. yeah, that's important. So everybody knows where to find the information. Awesome. All right. So let's try and let's talk about EMS hotspot analysis. This is this is a complicated subject, but tell me a little bit about sorry. Tell me a little bit about what you guys did. Okay. This was was this all this raw data you got like a da database yeah so this is all raw data that is uh, being stored in in house in the databases and then uh, i get the data from the id team they fetch it for me in the form of excel spreadsheets mm -hmm. so i've written scripts to like manipulate it and get the aggregate data out of it and then uh, visualize it in the form of graphs and pie charts so this basically uh, is can be used for analyzing the call volume inside the EMS uh, department and then uh, where is it exactly coming from, what time is it coming from and things like that to redistribute the fire and rescue services and uh, make it uniform throughout the county. So basically this is a dashboard, right? Explain what a dashboard is because when we're looking at it on paper here it may not be clear to people but this is like a, a pretty cool graphic display right of the so uh, basically it's like a uh, application which lets which will let the county officials select uh, the fire station number and then they can see uh, the data uh, respective to that fire station in the forms of uh, graphs and charts in these dashboards in like real time practically yeah close to real time basically not right. real time. so the chief of the fire station can on a regular basis go in there tap on different tabs and it changes how all the graphs look yes right? yes so it basically tells you uh, at what time of the day which fire station received how many calls what type of call it was uh, what was the number of that call and what is the percentage of that call man you're really taking us into the 21st century that's amazing <laughs> let's talk let's talk about this ADA survey survey tool so what, what was the goal here? So there was a survey which was being done like manually from the last 15 years. So Like manually, like a piece of paper. Piece of paper and yeah. So my job was to develop an online survey tool uh, which would help the, account, uh, the Department of Aging and Disabilities to collect data from uh, initially from the internal department and then I mean send it to different departments and then to the county to basically track the EDA accessibility issues. Mm -hmm. So. so Yep, it's an online uh, it's an online survey tool which will help the coordinator of the Department of Aging and Disabilities to basically gather data then analyze it analyze in terms basically so there's a question here and then you can uh, there's a visualization here also so it will give you basically a look and feel of uh, which kind of facilities are available in which location and and not and let's just back up again so just so people are clear we used to do this on pen and paper. So if I work at the Department of Aging and Disabilities and I want to find out you know, what the biggest concern was from the people who I serve in Arnold, I would have to go to the Arnold file, if there is an Arnold file, or I'd have to go to this big, huge stack of papers, flip through it, 
pull out the ones that say Arnold. I mean, you could be doing that for weeks, right? So now that's all electronic. And then also the beauty of it is on the other end, you push a button and you have a report that summarizes yeah. the exactly. responses. Yeah. Well, that's an amazing tool. I'm really, I'm really impressed with the work that you guys have done. So what do you want to do? What do you want to do with this degree afterward? You want to work for Google or what? Like what, what do you want to do? <laughs> so I'm looking for a developer role. I'll be a developer in a firm. A what? A software developer. Oh, a software developer yeah. for any particular companies you like? Like Microsoft. Microsoft's good. They're, they're pretty successful. Yep. So not Apple, Microsoft. So I have experience in Microsoft-related technologies. Okay, because I think some of the te some of the um, <laughs> executives from Apple are watching this right now, and they may say, "What? <laughs> Microsoft? That that's what you got?" No, but seriously, uh, we really appreciate the work that you guys did, and I can't wait to see this stuff when it's actually in practice. Because right now it's a it's a concept, and you've already built it, and now the county has to come behind and implement it, right? Exactly. Yep. Awesome. Well, good luck in your studies. You guys did a great job. Let's Thank take you. a look at some more projects. So one of the big goals in Anne Arundel County is to increase public access to the waterways. And one way to do that is mooring balls. That's right, mooring balls. If you've never heard of them, get used to it because they're, they're coming soon. So tell me your names, first of all. My name's Olivia. Olivia. I'm Natasha. Natasha. And I'm Rob. Rob, okay, very good. Um, first of all, this project had like more students working on it than I think any of the projects. How many students worked on this? Like there were 16 groups, 16 and each of them had a, like five students or more in it. Okay, and I forgot to ask, are you guys undergraduate or graduate? We're undergraduate. Okay, wow, wow. Look, no offense, but I've seen some undergraduate programs that I was like, eh, this is very impressive work. So just, if we can get a shot real quick, this is four gigantic panels of data and analysis about mooring balls. Okay, so here's the big question. What in the world is a mooring ball? Well, we analyzed different types of mooring stations that you could potentially dock your boat at. Okay. And we chose dolphin platforms, which was different from the standard just mooring buoy. Okay. So these could accommodate up to three boats in the one platform that could dock and then the goal of the project is to improve the um, tourism in the county mm -hmm. so people could come if there is a nice day, dock their boat at these mooring buoys and then go into the parks from there. Is the idea that people who are visiting, so I'm in my boat and going up the east coast, pulling into Chesapeake Bay and I say I want to stop there, you don't have to rent a slip, you don't have to go into a marina, is that the idea behind it? Right, the idea is that you can take your boat from the marina and you can take like a day trip, you can go to one of these state parks, dock your boat at the park and then go use the facilities. Uh, so it's kind of like those um, what, those bike stations where you can you know lock up the bike and then go, yeah. except you're not renting the boat, you're just renting the place to put it, just to be clear. All right, so tell us about all of this data and sort of what you guys did to figure out where to put these things. Yeah, so basically we did a top-down approach uh, for our methods, and we started with identifying different locations where we could actually put these uh, mooring stations. We were assigned this problem statement of looking for where we can put 50 of these. So mind you, uh, different groups look at it differently, but we thought it would be best if we just centralized it all at one location to reduce some costs on the installation. Um, when we got to um, looking at the different locations, we wanted to look at publicly owned land. And so we were looking at public parks on each of the five major rivers that go um, from Anne Arundel County out into the Chesapeake Bay. So the Patapsco, the Magathy, the Severn, the South, and the West. And when we looked at that, we also looked at different sort of factors that we thought uh, rated uh, highly on sort of the importance level. Uh, namely, sort of the tides that are coming in, if there's shelter being provided from any sort of extreme storm events, and uh, the location of oyster reefs. Channels. channels. Stay out of the channel. Yeah. Uh, stay out of the sea lanes, stay out of the sea channels. Um, also, if there's any sort of uh, erosion that could occur um, or scour underneath. When we looked at all of that, we narrowed it down to these three prime locations, Fort Smallwood, Quiet Waters, and South River. That's a, that's a good sampling of our parks as well. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then from that, we just did sort of cost analysis, and we don't, we weren't able to put all the, the charts up here, 
but we looked at both uh, the cash flow analysis, so basically how uh, the different sort of materials uh, would depreciate in value over time. Um, and so again, we were- Value in terms of revenue? No, no, in terms of the actual like buoys and the, the anchors. So like for these mooring stations, there's multiple components that go into it, um, namely the buoy, the chain, and, um, and the anchor. And then there's a two other set of components. With all of that, we were able to then analyze also the cost of them and how much it would cost and the benefits as well um, over their lifespan. So for some of these it was seven years, some of these it was ten years. Um, and then we projected it as sort of a present value or an annual value. The benefits we were looking at were both from the yearly or daily permitting and then also from the, the generated revenue that would come to local businesses with people coming into the, the mooring stations and using it. Awesome. So, what, yeah, yeah one, of, one of the things I was really amazed by is the calculation you all did that this would cost the county somewhere around $50,000 uh, a year and it would bring in one no, three point six million dollars yeah. in revenue so this is yeah. people they bring their boat in and then they go shopping right mm -hmm. they do other things what what kind of so did you use a lot of GIS data and stuff like that to determine where to put these things so we looked at a lot of maps we didn't our group didn't use GIS we also used like a live um, boat feed of Annapolis to con to figure out how many boats um, and determine volume, and then we use that in our calculations. What is a live boat feed? So online, Annapolis. Is that like an app it's or like something? A, it's a live boat tracker. Yeah, you can see how many boats are currently, you know, in the Sandy Point area and count them. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's yeah, really it cool. It tells you like the name of all the boats on this map. So you so you counted the boats. We counted the boats. Wow. And did you did you pick a particular location you thought would work the best? Or which one is it? Who won? Who won? Well, for our group, it was Sandy Point State Park. So oh, we did Oh, you had different teams pick yeah. different ones. Uh, we had 16 groups. They all chose different parks, but okay. our group decided on Sandy Point. And were you all in the same group? No. We were in the same group. Yeah. 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 Which one did you guys pick? We, Say Fort Smallwood. Fort Smallwood, yeah. No, which one did you guys pick? It was Fort Smallwood. It was Fort Smallwood. Yeah, it was, it was. That's Yours good. is the best. <laughs> Yeah, okay. it just how it ran out. That was how it turned out to be. Yeah. Right. So why did you pick Sandy Point? So we analyzed um, all the different parks in Anne Arundel County, and so we uh, excluded some just based off of like the depth of the sea floor, um, if there are oysters present, like uh, environmental factors, um, and then we decided Sandy Point because of all the amenities that were located there. Yeah, um, central location. It's a central too. location. People like to come here, and so we thought that there is already a large volume of people, um, and they need mooring stations. Okay, here's the real question. Why did you not pick Fort Smallwood Park and anger all the people of Pasadena? Well, just based on the different factors that were just mentioned, like the different amenities, Sandy Point already has three boat access ramps. True. So we so figured... So if you have a boat ramp, oh, you have to have a trailer. So that's right. why you so need a mooring. These, these would be for people coming from different places um, to get there, but Sandy Point just had the highest volume of boats coming already. It has big beaches, a nice view of the Bay Bridge. Mm -hmm. So we figured that it would be a great location that people would want to come to if they had this opportunity for the additional space to park their boats. Well, this is exciting stuff. You guys did an amazing job. And I hope we have mooring stations at all of these locations because I think people will really enjoy it and it's great for tourism. And if those economic numbers you came up with are true, then we're in for a pretty, pretty successful program. So there's a lot more that the University of Maryland Powell students uh, accomplished this semester. And um, we look forward to implementing all these ideas. You can go to aacounty.org and see all of the projects in great detail. That's it for today. Thanks for being with us.